All right, folks, the very long-awaited tutorial on how to make these small bladed swim jigs. These are inspired by the Mukai Bee Chatter, which is uh, unfortunate that we cannot buy these or sell these in the United States anymore because, well, due to patent laws from Z-Man, you cannot sell these, all right? So, hopefully this tutorial will help you guys make a few of your own and uh, go slay them, okay? And now, this tutorial is gonna be very long, so you guys can check out the description below as I created um, chapters, and you guys can also check that out in the timeline right here. So let me break down the video for you guys right now of the categories, okay? Obviously this is the intro. I'm gonna start off the next section of the video talking about all the materials, okay? From blades, to hooks, to body material, wires, okay? To the tools that I use to bend and cut the wires. The next section of the video will talk about how to bend your wire to get these, all right? And lastly, for the closing part of the video, I'm talking about a few things that I found about these lures and how to fish them so you guys can be successful and slay some fish. You guys ready for this? Let's do it. All right, this is my box right here, my Busby box, modular. And uh, let's open this bad boy up. The first thing I wanna talk about is the blade, okay? The blades that I recommend everyone to get is from Count Bass. And yes, they are a little bit dull. Let me just take one out for you guys to see. And also I will take out the Mukai so you guys can actually see the Mukai version, okay? So you guys see uh, what inspired me to make this. All right, so here's the Mukai Bee Chatter, okay? This thing is actually pretty light, but it sports a pretty big blade. If you guys compare, right, this would be around the same weight as the Z-Man uh, Flashback Mini 1 16th ounce, but it uses say the 1 8th ounce flashback penny blade, which is nice because this guy right here, because it's so big, it is actually gonna chatter really, really well right off the bat when it touches the water. Now, uh, this guy right here, I'm, I'm just waiting. So that guy right here weighs 2.1 grams. And um, yeah, let me compare the two blades for y'all to see right now. Okay, as you see, the Mukai blade is a little bit different. It uses a split ring because of that little groove right there. And because this blade don't have that, you guys gonna have to use a clip. Now note that the blade here is actually thicker. Just by a tad bit, like, see this Mukai right here? I could actually bend this very thin, which is great. Just like Z-Man, very great. The thinner the blade, the easier it starts up, okay? Keep in mind that, because I'm gonna show you a blade that sucks completely, and you guys need to avoid that. So yeah, this is a Count Bass Medium, okay? There is a small one, which is the same size, about the uh, 1 16th ounce, um, flashback mini, I don't recommend that. In fact, I tried making a few in the past before and it's just not that great. It just doesn't chatter as great as using something around this size. Now, if Count Pass can make these a lot thinner, potentially that will work, okay? But anyway, the weight of this is 0.7 grams just for that blade. And as you see, you know, the blade here is pretty dull, but it works, it chatters, okay? And that's the only thing you guys should get on AliExpress or uh, eBay, okay? And again, um, a lot of these things are linked in the description below. But let me show you this brand here that I got, and I don't exactly have the brand name here because the Jimbo is an idiot. I ripped off the the um, the staple uh, store name on top, but you know, it's super shiny, right? See that? Gold, black, right? And I made one, and I actually took it out to fish not too long ago. This blade here is actually so much thicker you guys could probably see that right there. See, it's a thicker, and I can prove it to y'all very easily just by weighing it. Once again, this is 0.7 grams, right? And let me move this a little closer. Look at that, 1.1 or one, okay? But yeah, it's a lot thicker, and this guy here does not chatter really well. I mean, it does chatter, but if you're fishing lightweight, and when I say light, I am using this guy right here, okay? This one bead right here, tungsten slot tungsten bead. Um, hold up, come on, stop rolling. This slot tungsten bead weighs almost two grams, right? I created this guy right here using a gold one, and I went to fish it at the creek, and I have to jerk it very hard to start it up. And in order to maintain the chatter, you are real pretty fast, up to a point where this thing almost bows out of control. Now note that chatter baits, these guys right here, they swim too fast is gonna spiral out of control and you guys create line twist, all right? So yeah, you want the thinner one, thus you want the Count Bass. I'm gonna leave links in the description below for here and exactly, exactly um, which store I bought it from and the exact brand. 
please avoid this at all costs if you guys are using this for finesse fishing, okay? Do not get it. In fact, I'm about to recycle these and just throw it right into the trash can because I don't want to even see it again. Ready? Gone, right in my trash bin. Okay, so now that I've got the blade out of the way, let's talk about binding material. Since we talked about this side of tungsten bead, I'll take the bag out and show y'all. You guys can get these on Amazon, AliExpress, um, eBay, and I will leave some links in the description below for these two. And I am using two sizes, okay? So the size 6mm, this thing weighs, again, very close to two grams. Okay, 1.9. And then the other one is 5.4 mm. Okay, and this guy weighs 1.2 grams. Very nice, right? These are all tungsten or, you know, it's probably some sort of tungsten alloy. But um, yeah, it's small, pretty heavy, and it's perfect. And I got them in three colors. There's so many different colors. Feel free to get what you guys like. I love the fluorescent stuff. Because, uh, you know, if you look at this, all you have is a, a blade, a body, and then you guys can put whatever trailer you want. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about are the snaps, okay? You're wondering what kind of snaps will fit. So, I did buy the Count Bass, the size 00, and I have to say, it's really, really tough to get this guy to even fit in here. I had to use pliers in order to get it in there, so it's not the best out there from Count Bass. You know, I don't know if any other size 00 will fit, right? However, um, I have these Jackson that I've gotten at Bait Finesse Empires. Now the S is very close, but this guy right here, for some reason, just using pliers, I could bend it in and actually get it fit, right, without warping. This guy right here that I got from Count Bass, you will warp a little bit and uh, you may throw one or two away, because I threw one or two away, all right? But the SS right here, which I ran out because I made a ton, all right? I made a ton. And um, yeah, this is by far the easiest one to get in here. You still need the pliers a little bit, right? But yeah, the SS or S will work for this blade right here. So the next thing I wanna talk about are hooks. Hooks, once again, the sky's the limit. You guys can do whatever you want. I used to do a lot of drop shot fishing for some deep water lakes. And uh, well, I stopped doing that. And I was like, dude, I got so many hooks here. I might as well use this. Now note that uh, this one right here, requires a thinner wire, which I'll talk about thin wires later because the eye of this is very, very small. You see that? Okay, I also got a bigger hook, which uh, either one will work, okay? So you guys don't have to use like, a, uh, what do you call those? Um, inline hooks for jerk baits or spoon hooks, you, but you guys can, you know, uh, especially if you're into the barbless stuff. Uh, Bait Finesse Empires have a lot of uh, sh different shades, right? Different um, eyelets, for instance, um, we have some decor here. This is a pretty nice one. Barbus, right? In line. I got some Van Fuchs, which is a premium brand too. Um, spoon hooks. Now, the orientation of these eye does not matter because you're going to be in control in uh, bending the wires. All right? So, don't be afraid to use what you guys have. All right, wires. So many stainless steel wires out there. You guys can buy it on AliExpress. You guys can buy it from eBay, right? I got these from uh, eBay and I think I made enough videos where you guys could barely get these anymore because everyone's buying it off. And thank you for everyone who watched my videos and click my uh, affiliate links in the description. You guys help me out a lot. You guys fund my fishing adventures and help me make more videos. So once again, thank you. Thank you all. And thank you for those who are watching this video right now and will buy some stuff with the affiliate links below. But yep, I am using uh, 0.026, okay? Of course, you don't need to get it this long, but something this long, you could make like maybe two or three pieces, right? Because as you see, you don't use that many wires for this guy right there. You could definitely uh, beef it up a little bit too. Uh, 0.03, that will work too. But once again, you have to make sure you get the right one. If you guys use some odd hooks like I am, I'm using drop shot hooks and the eyes are too too small. So I use primarily this guy right here. And um, Count Bass do sell some, okay? This guy right here, uh, 50 piece at uh, size 15, 0 0.08 mm, okay? Uh, obviously they're uh, from different countries. This is sold in US, this is sold in Asia, so the metric system is a little different. But uh, this guy right here, let me just do a quick comparison. I think this one might be thicker than this one. I, I, I mean, I could have probably just, uh, you know, 
look online and co compared it, right? But let's take a look together. Yeah, it looks like um, the Count Bass one's just a little thicker, but I'm just bending these wires right now. They're pretty flimsy, so it's nice. And I want to let you guys know, right? You guys can fiddle on line or wire diameter for weight too. Use that as consideration because sometimes you want less or you want more depending how deep you want your chatterbaits to be, okay? But uh, I am gonna be using the thinner ones for uh, my tutorial. All right, time for my torturing tools. I mean, my, uh, my work tools, okay? So let's knock out the two most important thing, which are these here, wire bending. It doesn't matter which one you wanna use, okay? This one seems like a, uh, something easier because you guys could um, form loops a lot easier than this guy right here, but uh, this guy right here, was the first one I used. So, um, you know, it's personal preference, but lately I've been leaning on this because it's new and, uh, you know, I wanna master it. But yeah, you guys can get these on Amazon. Uh, Beadsmith is this brand here. This one is a no name brand, but I believe Beadsmith also have a, a specific one uh, for wire bending as well, okay? So wire bending pliers, links in the description below. Some sort of wire cutters, okay? You guys can use some cheap one from, uh, you know, Lowe's, uh, Harbor Freight or Amazon. All right, pliers. Don't use these to cut uh, unless you guys have really, really good ones, but these are uh, cheapos from, uh, I guess this is Lowe's Cobalt. Uh, I did have a wire cutter and that thing shattered after cutting maybe uh, two years of wires. The thickest I cut is, uh, I don't know, 0 0.03, five inch. So um, yeah, and you see some of it is rusting too. Now, um, enough about that. Let's talk about the two different shapes here. This guy right here obviously is used to hold, let's say a circle, like see this loop right here? You guys can hold this like that and then help you twist, right? So just for stability. This guy's an all rounder, you could do the same thing too, or you know, you could do uh, some um, uh, clips, right? Like I mentioned earlier, sometimes uh, you may have to bend your clips a little bit and force it through. You don't notice, it makes it a lot easier, okay? But anyway, this is all the tools and materials. Let's move on to the actual tutorial and then we'll wrap up the video with the best practices and some things that I've found out while making and fishing these lures. All right, so here we are. We took the 0 0.026 wire. We wanna first cut this little silly thing off. Some of the wires you get may not have a loop already formed. If you don't have it, great. If you do, just cut it off, okay? All right, and then dispose it. Watch out if you guys have kids or animals, right? Don't let these fly around, okay? It's not good. I have one shot across the room, and my wife gave me the stink eye. Like, for the longest time, I had to go find it. I haven't found it, all right? Anyways, um, yeah, so first thing first, I'm gonna use this guy, okay? So, here's your wire. You wanna first create the first loop for your hook. So, here you go. And once again, depending on your hook, you know, you want to select the right wire diameter and also um, um, orientation does not matter at the moment because like I said, different hooks have different eye orientation, right? We are using, you know, this anyway, so who cares? So you want to create a loop, right? So as, as you saw, I squeezed down and I made a little bend right there for that because that's going to go around and I'll bend this around. Then I shift this over, bend it around, make your loop. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. Anyways, you guys are DM me. Just kidding. Sorry, Z Man. I didn't say it. You put your hook through here. Okay. Get it in. All right. After you put your hook down, what you want to do is you could. Put this thing back right here and just bend this shaft, okay? Back up just a little bit and you guys could use this by turning a little bit, right? And you have this nice, perfect little eye right there now. See that? Now, I would suggest if you're a beginner, use longer tag ends, okay? The reason is, I'll show you next, and you will find out that uh, it will hurt. It will hurt your hand. So you're a computer guy like me who types all day on a computer with soft, sexy, womany hands, right? Yeah, it's, it may hurt you a little bit, right? So anyway, um, that's why you have tools like this, right? You put the bead down after that, you bend it down just like that, presto. 
Now you want to make this super duper strong. You could uh, rotate this a little bit. And yes, this is why I say you need this guy right here. It's a lot easier than a needle nose. And that holds on pretty well. And just twist, watch out, don't hook yourself. Twist, and twist, all right? There you go, that's all you need. You don't need to twist that much. You guys can, but the more you twist, the more weight you add to your lure. All right, next thing you wanna do is trim that tie again, and there we go. Now I wanna mention that these small little wire lures, it can get sharp. All right, next part is making the eye of your lure to hold a chatter blade. And you need to take note where your hook position is. So now my hook is uh, this way, right? You can see that the eye is not an inline style, so it needs to be this way. If you had an inline style, right, likely your bottom loop is this way in order for it to fit so that your hook faces this way, right? So anyway, you gotta face this way for the lure. So you, what you wanna do is, and I like using this guy right here for this very end part is, and you need to make that loop right here. And you wanna back out just a little bit, not all the way down here, just a little bit, okay? Cause you need to make room for your wraps around the base. And first thing you want to do is, when you got it tight like this, right? And in fact, I'll try to do it this way over the, the lens. You want to hold this thing down a little bit, right? See my my index finger? And I'm start squeezing. See how that warps down this way? And I squeeze it back down this way? Boom. You start creating that loop. Then you bend it around this way. And then you re release a little bit, rotate, squeeze down. Keep repeating till you hit around right here, okay? And now, and now you take your blade and this blade I already put this guy on there already, okay? You wanna slide it up and you wanna make sure that the blade, okay? You see the, the ramp? The ramp needs to face you, okay? When you cast, it needs to go against the water. So, do you slide this way around? Nope. You need to face this way and it's okay you just slide it through right and then you rotate it and if it doesn't look right just take it back out that's all you have to do but boom there you go right here's my lure oh, I'm all tangled up and here you go look at that this is it perfect I'll be pulling this way okay all right next thing you want to do back to this guy right here okay Crimp down nicely on the eye, and you can bend this up a little bit if you want to. And then now you're trying to wrap this guy around the shank. I normally do this so much faster off the camera. All right, so yeah, you just wrap it a few times. You don't need to wrap it a lot, okay? The more you wrap, the more weight you add, okay? So I got it down. I basically wrapped it over my other wire because uh, I kind of effed up earlier. I squeezed it down and uh, the wire popped up, went this way up, uh, onto the shank. And I was like, you know what? It's okay. I can fix it. And I fixed it. Well, more, more like a Band-Aid fix, but it still works. Okay. Let me trim this thing down. Ah! Got it. Wife won't be mad. Presto, here we go. We are now done with making the lure. As you see, it's in line on the top, okay? So this thing will chatter, and whatever plastic you put in tail, or if you want to do a hair, right? I did one recently with a zonker tail, right? And a chenille body, and woo, it looks sexy. Unfortunately, I used a stupid blade, and then now I need to cut it and uh, use it for something else. But anyway, this is done. All right, folks, there you go. This is how you make the micro chatter bait. Now, before I let you go, I wanna talk about a few things about these lures. I'm sure you guys wanna learn how Jimbo uh, fish these lures and also why I make it this way. I'm gonna start off with uh, why I made it this way without a split ring, because a lot of people use split rings so they can change out the hooks. Now, as a lure maker, wire bender, right? If I have a damaged one, I'll just go put this back in a box and I grab another one. You see how many I have right here? It's that easy to make, okay? If this breaks for some reason, 
I'm gonna bring it home, I'm gonna cut it, I reuse parts that I can, and just make a new one. And I know a lot of people have asked me before on some of my social media, right? Why don't I use a split ring right here to connect your hook so that if your hook bends out, you can swap off to another hook. And that is a great question. And the reason why is when you add more articulated joints to your uh, lure, the less your lure will actually wiggle, okay? This is why in the bladed swim jig world, there's not many articulated swim uh, jigs, right, that uses a blade because it reduces that wobbling of the tail. There's maybe a handful, you know, Z-Man only have one, right? He, uh, they also uh, collaborate with another company and also there's a lot of, you know, smaller company that does it. None of them are that great for that reason. So if you want to add a split ring, you know, let me warn you in advance, adding that one more, it's going to suck, okay? So don't use split rings if you don't have to. Next thing, okay? I play with many different bodies, as you guys saw, you know, I was playing around with, with this body here. I felt like it's too light. And as you see, I have this cone weight here from Swagger Tungsten uh, for this uh, homemade, you know, Jika rig. Uh, but I made a couple before, and in fact, my last video I fished at a canal, I used this guy here. This cone weight weighs 1 16th ounce. This guy here looks sexy as heck, but it's pricey. It's a lot better to use something like this, right? It's a lot of tungsten beads because you guys get it in bulk and you guys can make a ton. But anyway, um, let's go back to materials, right? These, I'm on a budget, I wanna make a lot, right? If I snag them, it's not gonna break my heart. If I were to use a swag of tungsten, I snag something or a pickerel bites me off, you know, after a couple dozen, I'm gonna be like, oh man, my wallet's thinning out, okay? And my wallet's gonna thin out. So yeah, that's why I opted for these guys here. Uh, the lighter weight, these guys are gonna fish higher in the water column. Uh, if you wanna fish a little lower in the water column, definitely wanna use sinking plastic rather than floating plastic. Uh, and the opposite applies. If you guys feel like you're fishing too close to the bottom, use a floating plastic. You know, like something like a, some of the Z-Mans, right? Some, I, I like to use like kind of wormy stuff. You guys can use the Mule, a fishing supply, their minnow, and that will work. Uh, for the heavier guy, Right? I like to fish close to the bottom as possible, especially those days where fish are not active. If you're trout fishing, I fish it close to the bottom. Right? I slay it. I slay it a lot. Uh, for creek fishermen right, who are fishing for trout in creeks, swinging this like a spoon is actually amazing. Okay? Once this thing swings past the current, let's say the current is going this way, you cast you know, straight across, just let your line, uh, slack line just a little bit so it sinks down to the where you want it, and then hold. Reeling very slow, like super slow, and you already feel this thing chatter, and it slays, okay? Sometimes I just cast it down uh, stream and just, just hold it there. Hold it right in front of the pool, and it stays wobbling, and stays still, and even the most lethargic trout will come up to it and look at it and maybe even swipe at it. That's how great these guys are, okay? Anyway, that's all I really have to share about these folks, but I do want to weigh it before I let you go, just in case you guys are getting the exact same materials that I am using. So I'm gonna start off with the, the 5.4 mm in chartreuse. You can see that this one right here is 2.3, but uh, not all of them uses the same wire. So uh, I'm weighing a different one, 2.3, okay. Um, maybe one more, 2.1, okay, see? They're gonna be off a little bit depending how much wire you wrap around as well. So I'll keep that in mind. And then here goes the uh, 6 mm, three grams, okay? Here's another one, three grams. Not too bad, huh? Last one, maybe a 3.1, 3.1. There you go, okay? Anyway, uh, I have fun making this video, and uh, just a quick note I wanna let y'all know, okay? I actually made this video twice, well, a specific section, and the reason why is I made this video at first using this new shiny one because I was like, yo, this is so nice, and I found out while I'm making that video, this thing was too heavy, and thicker, and then when I fished it last weekend, I found out that this guy sucked. So once again, don't get this. Anyway, folks, I thank you guys for watching this video. I thank everyone for bugging me and bugging me and bugging me to make this video, and I apologize for the delay. And uh, yeah, now that you know how to make it, I hope you guys go out there and catch some fish because the fish don't wait. Thank you, peace out.